All the way back in December 2016, I reported on O2 UK's trials of 2100 MHz refarm from 3G to 4G in the North Lincolnshire city of Lincoln. Back then, the refarm 2100 MHz 4G carrier was only 5 MHz, but a lot has changed since then, both in terms of the trials in Lincoln and the 2100 MHz refarm on a more widespread non-trial deployment basis. In order to understand the changes to the 2100 MHz spectrum, its refarm and use, it's important to learn a bit more about what O2's 2100 MHz spectrum allocation looks like and how it varies in the different deployments. So O2 has 10 MHz paired of 2100 MHz spectrum. Paired meaning because it's FDD, there's a downlink portion and an uplink portion. I will be focusing on the downlink portion for the purposes of this video. So in a standard non-refarm site, the 2100 MHz is used entirely for 3G transmissions, split between two carriers equal in size. The first carrier goes by the UARFCN of 10637 and the second 10661. And these are contiguous carriers, so dual carrier 3G runs very happily without soft handover between sites, so you can do dual carrier on a single site. In the case of the first Lincoln 2100 MHz 4G refarm trial which was going on back last year, the first 3G carrier was refarmed from 3G to 4G and this 4G carrier for the EAR FCN of 175. Now of course as one carrier was used one carrier then remained for 3G and continued to bear the UAR FCN of 10661. However, nowadays in Lincoln, on the trial refarm sites, there's actually 10 megahertz of 4G on 2100 megahertz. So the entire 2100 megahertz spectrum has been shifted from 3G operation to 4G operation and that then bears the EARFCN of 199. Away from the Lincoln trial site and moving on to the more widespread public deployment of 40 2100 MHz, which is started very recently in Leicester, the 4G bandwidth is 5 MHz. So much like the initial trials in Lincoln, there remains 5 MHz for 3G on 2100 MHz as well. However, the 4G occupies the second carrier, so the 10661 carrier's place, and the 3G on 10637 remains as it is. Obviously, with the 2100 MHz spectrum being moved from 3G to 4G, then you need to recoup that 3G capacity from somewhere for legacy devices and to support circuit switch fallback calls on devices that do not support Vaulty. And the way that O2 does this is by deploying a second 3G carrier onto their 900 MHz band by refarming from 2G or just making use of 900 MHz spectrum not previously deployed in an area. So O2's main 3G carrier is 2963. And in the initial lot 2016 Lincoln test area, the second 3G carrier UARFCN 3087. However, on the subsequent deployments of Refarm 2100, so L21, the second 3G carrier has been on the UAR FCN of 3012. And that's not just in the Lincoln test area, but also Leicester and London and places like that. I've seen it expand very rapidly. Now this 2100 MHz spectrum refarm is very important for O2, who has by far the lowest amount of spectrum per customer 
of any mobile network in the UK. And up to 2100 megahertz refarm point, they were deploying a maximum of 15 megahertz of 4G spectrum into areas which was composed of the 10 megahertz on 800 and 5 megahertz on 1800 megahertz which itself is actually refarm spectrum from 2G to 4G. However, 15 megahertz is not a lot of spectrum when you consider that EE has 70 megahertz of 4G spectrum in a reasonable number of areas now and Vodafone doesn't have all that much less either. The difference in 4G spectrum deployment becomes even more stark once you take into account the network's customer numbers, where at the last financial reports that I've read, O2 has around about 26 million customers natively versus EE on close to 30 million customers natively. However, O2 has a huge number of virtual network operated customers also using their network, which do not appear on their direct network financial figures, which will increase their customer number figure significantly. So as you can see, the addition of more spectrum, more 4G spectrum through the refarm of 2100 megahertz is very, very important for O2 because they can go from 15 megahertz of 4G spectrum to 20 and eventually 25 megahertz and 15 to 25 is a very big jump in spectrum deployment. Certainly the sites in Lincoln with the 25 megahertz of 4G were very fast, such as this one in the center of Lincoln, which obviously very busy when I visited, I think it was a Saturday or a Sunday, so very, very busy. And as you can see, the performance across all the carriers is very good. However, my device, cannot do any carrier aggregation combination with band one, so I was unable to test triple carrier aggregation. But speed-wise, it would probably have been over about 120 megabits per second, dependent on sort of resource scheduling on the device. O2 4G 2100 megahertz is going to be coming to more areas in the coming months and the start of 2018, because as I said earlier in the video, the second 3G900 carrier, 3012, has been appearing in areas like central London. And this provides very strong evidence that 2100 MHz is going to be partly shifted over to 4G. Now I say partly because in areas like central London, they're probably not going to be able to survive with just two carriers of 3G on just the 900 megahertz band for the time being. They will need to have the three carriers, so the two on 900 plus one on 2100, and then have the five megahertz of 2100 megahertz 4G as a useful boost for now, with the ability to expand to 10 later on. However, I might be wrong, and they might be doing like Lincoln and being able to do 10 megahertz of 4G 2100 in the coming months. I don't know the sort of internals of their network traffic by radio layer and frequency so I can't really sort of make a confident prediction in that regard but nonetheless it should provide a big boost in sort of speeds and capacity as time goes on. So um, thanks for watching. 3 has also done a 10 megahertz refarm of 2100 megahertz to 4G in some select areas recently so there'll be an upcoming video about that as well.